Soldier, your assignment is to pee. Right here. We'll give it a few months and hopefully some other gunpowder will show up in the meantime. When the American Revolutionary War started in 1775, things got a little weird as the rebel colonists' supply of gunpowder began running low. See, the main chemical compound in gunpowder, potassium nitrate, is not that common out in nature in the United States. And because they couldn't order it off Amazon, the soldiers said, hey, let's make it ourselves. So they mixed pea with soil, ash, leaves, and sticks. Strange, gross, but actually kind of smart. With the help of bacteria, ammonia from pea reacts with oxygen to form nitrates that bond with potassium ions in the ash and soil, and there you have it, potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate is so crucial because it makes up 75% of gunpowder. The rest is 15% charcoal and 10% sulfur. We'll now refer to this mixture by its more specific name, black powder. When you ignite black powder, it starts a combustion reaction. This kind of reaction requires two things, a fuel source and an oxidizing agent. In this case, the fuel source is charcoal, which is a bunch of carbon atoms all strongly bonded to each other. Potassium nitrate supplies the oxidizing agent, oxygen. When charcoal heats up, its carbon-carbon bonds are broken and new bonds are formed, releasing some energy. This energy raises the temperature of the potassium nitrate and it splits apart, releasing oxygen, which keeps the reaction going until all the charcoal is used up. All this happens in a few thousandths of a second. Potassium nitrate removes the need for atmospheric oxygen, so black powder can ignite in a closed, oxygen-depleted space, like the barrel of a gun. This is why you can't smother fireworks to put them out, but you can smother a campfire. A campfire needs external oxygen, fireworks have it built in. So if you were looking for something to burn, you could actually just stop at charcoal and potassium nitrate. But it's the sulfur that makes black powder such a powerful explosive. It heats up really quickly and it's ready to accept the oxygen from the potassium nitrate. This creates sulfur dioxide, which acts as another fuel source, ultimately making the combustion of black powder go much, much faster. The gases released when black powder combusts take up way more space than the solids that they came from. Pressure builds, and before you know it, there's an explosion. When black powder is trapped in a totally sealed off space, you've got a bomb. When it's trapped in a space with just a small hole, that's a rocket. Throw it in a mini cannon with a bullet, and you've got a gun. Which brings us back to the American Revolutionary War and that delightful pea, soil, and ash slurry. Unfortunately for colonial troops, that stuff took months to marinate and still didn't help them make enough gunpowder to win a war. So they relied heavily on help from the French and a raid of Bermuda's black powder supply, a secret mission orchestrated by co-conspirators Bermudian merchant and militia officer Henry Tucker and founding father Ben Franklin. Uh, by the way, that whole mixing pea and soil to make potassium nitrate thing, that didn't totally disappear after the American Revolution. There are accounts of Confederate troops collecting urine from the bedpans of townspeople to overcome a gunpowder shortage in the South. Even though black powder was essential for American troops to win the war, that doesn't mean it was ideal. The crazy plumes of smoke it released made it impossible to see the battlefield and corroded soldiers' guns. So when something better came along, people were like, yes, please give me that. And that thing was smokeless powder. Smokeless powder is a general term that covers a combination of a bunch of different chemicals, but basically they're a class of crazy powerful explosives. They're components able to break down and explode faster than the speed of sound. Although smokeless powder isn't totally smoke-free, it produces almost no smoke compared to black powder. That's because smokeless powder reactions release mostly gases, whereas more than half of the products of black powders are solids, including gun corroding, battlefield clouding, potassium sulfide. Although black powder is still used for things like fireworks, specific types of mining, and Civil War reenactments, there's only one black powder factory that exists today in the United States. All the others have sort of exploded or closed down due to safety concerns. Smokeless powders were also super dangerous in their early days. For example, nitroglycerin. See these three groups attached to the carbon backbone? These oxygens act as oxidizers, which means that nitroglycerin, if you mishandle it, can explode on its own. It's not like black powder, which needs a separate compound, potassium nitrate, to supply the oxidizer. Nitroglycerin was too dangerous to use on its own, so researchers worked to find compounds that would stabilize it. One of those researchers, Alfred Nobel, yes, the Nobel Prize Nobel, did so in the mid-1800s, which led to the creation of dynamite. Smokeless powder is now not only less smoky and more powerful than black powder, 
It's also easier to manufacture without worrying about, you know, your factory exploding. Have you ever been to a Revolutionary War or Civil War reenactment? I certainly have not. But I want to know, how smoky was it? Let us know in the comments, and we'll see you next week. Surely there's got to be one of you out there who's been. Yes, yeah, you, you, sir, sir, please comment. Thank you.